This is a demonstration of solar calc brought to you by Therma Solutions, available at www.therma-solutions.com. Solar calc is a market leading design program to assist professional heating engineers on the installation of solar thermal hot water systems. For a solar thermal system to work effectively and to achieve optimum savings, Several factors need to be considered, such as the inclination and gradient of the roof, location, shading of nearby trees, solar fraction for that region, height and length of the system, as well as cylinder sizing, coil areas and hot water estimation per person. Fortunately, SolarCalc provides answers to these and more in seconds. And that's not all. SolarCalc can work out the payback time of the installation, amendable inflation and government incentive fields as well as a tailor-made cost sheet called Estimator that uses the data in safe reports, making costing for jobs never easier. SolarCalc takes you through the whole process from conception to completion. So let's go through an example by filling in the fields as we go down the page. For this installation, there are four people in the household. Hot water demand is normally between 30 and 50 litres, so we're going to select 40 litres. You may want to increase or decrease this, the choice is yours. Next we select the standby volume provided by the backup source such as a system boiler. Don't worry if you're going for a separate preheat or buffer store as that's given to you later. You can see from the table below extracted from British Standard 6700 that a standard four bedroom house requires a cylinder of between 170 and 200 litres. So I'm going to select 200. The collectors are to be positioned on the south facing roof and their tilt is around 50 degrees. If the positioning of the collectors result in too much irradiation loss, the program will at this point advise you of this. Average solar fraction for my region is around 50%, and there are a couple of trees nearby and a chimney nearby, so we're selecting a moderate overshading factor. The temperature of the cold supply entering the property is 12 degrees, and 22 mil is selected for our theoretical pipework diameter. This part has nothing to do with your proposed pipework selection, it's just for standard heat loss calculations. The program tells you what diameter to install later. The pipework will be insulated, so we've selected that. And its thickness will be about 50 mil. The options here are between 12 and 160 millimeters. The backup from the boiler will be timed to coincide with demand, so that's what we select. The run of the pipework from the collector to the cylinder is eight meters. And the height from the collector to the cylinder is four meters. One pump, one flow meter will be fitted. The selection of proposed pumps and meters in these last fields are for system volume calculations as each component stores around half a litre of transfer fluid. That's everything complete. All that's left is to click on the update summary button. The summary screen supplies you with 10 key answers for every installation across three different types of collector. The standard flat plate, high performance flat plate and evacuated tube. The chosen collector type is already known so in our case we focus on the evacuated tube column on the right. Working down we can see that 4 square metres of collector are required. Two types of cylinder ranges are given, 142 to 214 litres for a separate preheat and 282 to 354 litres for a combined twin coil with plane and fin coil area options beneath. The installation pipe work should be fitted in 50 mil copper. The expansion vessel calculations are based on a vessel with a six bar safety valve and a one bar overpressure. Here we need an 18 litre vessel with a one and a half bar gas side pressure and a 1.8 bar system side pressure. System volume is six litres, telling you exactly how much heat transfer fluid is needed. The target energy figure in kilowatt hours is shown beneath and this will be the figure we use when working out payback later. As you can see it's very comprehensive. Handy tips and guidance for each section are shown in the info buttons as well as in the notes and comments section below. So now we know what to install, the next job is to accurately work out what it's going to cost. For this we're going to go into our cost sheet called Estimator and from there into Payback which skillfully works out the number of years the project costs to be paid back through the amount of solar energy provided by the installation. Estimator is the perfect place to help you accurately cost out a solar installation in minutes. And to make things easier, the program can take known data from saved solar calc reports and pre-populate some of the fields for you. I saved our old report as solar test 2114, so we select that here. 
Our chosen collector is an evacuated tube and instantly we can see the first seven fields pre-filled in, allowing costs to be placed against them. The sheet is split into two parts, materials and services. Materials include all the likely components needed in a standard solar installation, so nothing's left out of the quotation. At the bottom of the materials section you can see add a new material row. That can be selected if you think anything else is needed, or you can just delete rows by selecting any of the X buttons to the right. The second section contains a list of services such as scaffolding, structural engineering, and of course your own fees. What you choose to fill in will depend on what the homeowner has asked you to supply and coordinate. So it's all there, as well as separate boxes for government taxes. I'm not going to put a figure in every box, so instead I'm going to type my own estimate of 3,500 at the top. If we scroll down you can see that we can email this report with or without costs, or go straight to payback or just save the report and quit. Emailing without cost could be useful if you wanted to get an accurate quote back from a merchant or supplier for the materials you specified, and with costs to a customer in the form of a quotation for the work. Now that we've worked out the cost of the project, all that's left to do is work out the payback time. This provides real added value to any service helping homeowners understand when a likely return on their energy saving investment is likely to occur. Having selected the payback button at the end of Estimator, we can see our estimated cost for the project, as well as the annual solar contribution field for the evacuated tube collectors pre-filled in for us. You can of course enter your own values as well as selecting payback from the outset by selecting the icon at the top of the page. So only four fields are needed here to give you your payback timescale. The first is the current fuel used to heat the hot water cylinder, which in our case is gas. The second is the price per kilowatt hour of that fuel, which I've estimated to be 5 pence. Any government transport department will provide benchmark prices, or alternatively, refer to a recent fuel bill. I'm leaving annual inflation at 10%. Any government contributions or renewable heat incentives are to be placed in the last box. For this, I'm selecting 12 pence. And instantly you can see that the payback time of the installation will take 9 years approximately. And finally you can email this report on its own or with your own estimates from Estimator or just save it under a file name of your choice. That concludes the process of specifying and designing a solar thermal installation from concept to completion with the help of SolarCalc. SolarCalc, Estimator and Payback can be used on any PC, mobile or tablet and are available at www.therma-solutions.com.